His arm hits the ground before he even realizes it's gone. A clean slice, blood spraying across the pavement. Deadpool looks down, then up, and just shrugs. Eh, I've had worse. Seconds later, muscle fibers crawl out from the stump like living threads, weaving themselves into a growing arm. He even waves mid-regrowth. That's not a gag. It's regeneration at impossible speed. So how could anyone survive that kind of trauma? Today, we're diving into the biology and physics behind Deadpool's insane healing factor and why it would kill any normal person. To understand it, we've got to rewind back to the experiment that created him. Before the red suit, before the jokes, Wade Wilson was just a man dying of cancer. The Weapon X program promised him a cure and delivered something entirely different. Scientists engineered him as a living test subject, combining experimental treatments, radiation exposure, and a reactivated mutant gene sourced from Wolverine's DNA. The result? A body that regenerates faster than it can die. The tragedy is that it wasn't supposed to work this way. Weapon X wanted a soldier who could heal from battlefield wounds, not a man who could survive complete dismemberment. In real biology, we have limited analogs to this kind of regeneration. Your skin closes over small cuts by pulling nearby cells together and dividing new ones. Your liver can regrow sections after surgery, and certain animals, like starfish and salamanders, can fully regenerate limbs. In humans, stem cells play the key role. They act like blank templates that can become any tissue type. Deadpool's system breaks that limit. Normal human cells divide at specific speeds because of chemical checkpoints that prevent runaway growth, push them faster, and DNA starts breaking down. That's one reason cancer happens. Cells mutate to bypass controls that tell them to stop replicating. Deadpool's experiment didn't just accelerate healing. It introduced mutations that made his cells immortal, similar to cancer's never-die behavior. But immortality, at the cellular level, comes with chaos. If every cell refuses to die, tissue balance collapses. You'd develop tumors across every organ, and your body would essentially eat itself trying to regenerate faster than nature allows. Deadpool's appearance, those burn-like scars and twisted skin, reflects that biological meltdown. His healing keeps him alive, but barely holds his body together. It's an impossible balance between regeneration and decay. If his body tried to heal faster, it would overheat, collapse, or shut down from metabolic exhaustion, slow it down, and the cancer takes over again. Somehow, his physiology lives at the razor's edge of constant renewal and destruction, a system so unstable, it should fail instantly. And yet, he doesn't just survive injuries, he comes back from total devastation, and still, he reforms, which raises the real question. If Deadpool can heal from anything, what actually happens when he dies? We've seen Deadpool survive things that would end anyone else twice over. A grenade to the chest, a full body incineration, even having his head separated cleanly from his shoulders. In one scene, he's literally holding his own decapitated head by the hair, talking to it. Moments later, he's somehow whole again. It's surreal. But let's break down what would actually happen inside a human body for something like that to work. First, the raw biology. To regrow a limb, you need more than just skin closure or blood clotting. You need cell populations capable of rebuilding everything. Salamanders, for instance, regenerate legs using a process called dedifferentiation. Mature cells near the wound revert into a primitive stem cell-like state. Those cells then multiply and rebuild the lost part guided by chemical gradients that tell them exactly where to form bone or muscle. But even in salamanders, the process takes weeks, and the regenerated limb is never perfectly identical. Now, imagine trying that on a human scale. An adult arm weighs around 5 kilograms. To rebuild that much tissue, Deadpool cells would have to divide billions of times per second, each replication perfectly faithful to its original DNA and each cell properly oxygenated, fed, and electrically wired into the nervous system. Human cell turnover in wound healing is measured in days, not seconds. Even stem cells can't keep up without suffering DNA breakage or energy collapse. Which brings us to the energy problem. Regrowing a limb is like constructing it from scratch. Energy has to come from somewhere. Food calories, stored fat, or chemical energy in the body. 
A human needs about 2,000 calories a day to maintain basic functions. To rebuild a single arm in minutes, Deadpool would need tens of millions of calories instantly, roughly the energy in several hundred pounds of fat. Yet his physique never changes dramatically. There's no visible source for that mass, no external energy feed. Scientists studying regeneration have tried mimicking the salamander trick in mammals using growth factor cocktails and plasma scaffolds. The results? Slight improvements in wound repair, but nothing close to full limb regrowth. Our bodies treat major trauma as something to seal off, not to rebuild. The immune system floods the area with inflammation, closes the wound with scar tissue, and moves on. Deadpool's version ignores all those breaks, essentially performing large-scale regeneration that should cause immune collapse or systemic failure. Then there's the head issue. Decapitation severs the spinal cord and stops blood flow to the brain. Within seconds, neurons begin dying from oxygen loss, and after five minutes, the damage becomes irreversible. For Deadpool to survive having his head removed, his healing would have to regenerate a functioning brain, including memories, personality, and consciousness before any permanent loss occurred. Even if his brain regenerated, there's no clear reason it would store the previous mind intact. Technically, each time his head regrows, it should be a new person. The comics sometimes hint at this horror. He feels every cut, every burn, but never truly loses awareness. Imagine the pain receptors firing continuously while his body reassembles itself at a molecular scale. Immortality tied directly to agony. Surviving decapitation is unbelievable, but surviving the kinds of impacts he endures takes it even further. The limits of biology are one thing, the limits of physics are another entirely. A normal human body is fragile compared to the punishment Deadpool takes on a daily basis. Bullets rip tissue at hundreds of meters per second. Balls from several stories exert thousands of newtons of force. Explosions produce shockwaves strong enough to rupture organs. Somehow, he not only heals from these impacts, he remains functional seconds later, talking mid-regeneration like nothing happened. To see how far this pushes reality, we need to look at the raw physics of survival. Take falls first. When Deadpool jumps from a moving vehicle or plummets off a freeway sign, the energy on impact equals his body weight multiplied by gravity and distance falling. A typical 80 kilogram man hitting the ground after a 30 meter drop would experience over 70,000 joules of kinetic energy compressing through his skeleton in less than a second. Real humans die not from broken bones alone, but from their organs decelerating inside them. What's called blunt trauma deceleration. Blood vessels rupture, lungs tear, and the aorta can rip apart. Deadpool lands, jokes, and walks away. Then there's ballistic trauma. A standard rifle bullet carries roughly 2,000 joules of energy. Multiply that by a full magazine, and his body is receiving the kinetic equivalent of several car crashes in under a minute. Even if each wound regenerated instantly, that recovery would unleash thermal energy as new cells form. Each gram of regenerated tissue requires about four kilojoules just to synthesize the molecules. So by the time he takes 10 bullets, his metabolism should spike to thousands of times normal human output, literally cooking him from the inside. Yet, he keeps firing back. Explosions are even more absurd. In Deadpool 2, he's thrown across entire bus lanes by a blast that would easily generate several hundred kilopascals of pressure at close range. Humans lose consciousness at less than one-tenth that overpressure. Eardrums rupture, lungs collapse. For Deadpool to survive, his internal organs must behave like flexible ballistics gel, distributing force without tearing apart. It's a total redefinition of material strength at the biological level. Now compare that to known human endurance tests. Fighter pilots experience up to 9 Gs before blacking out. Beyond 12, most people suffer retinal damage. Deadpool endures hundreds of Gs when slammed into buildings or thrown by superhuman opponents, yet somehow keeps moving. Thermal injury adds another layer. When he's engulfed in fire, regeneration doesn't prevent sensory overload. Nerve endings still register pain before they regenerate. In theory, he should experience excruciating agony continuously until reassembly completes. The same applies to chemical burns or acid. Each restored layer reactivates pain receptors. Rapid healing doesn't numb sensation, it repeats it 
indefinitely. The bigger paradox lies in the nervous system. Neurons are information processors that rely on chemical continuity. Destroy them abruptly and memory disappears. Even if Deadpool rebuilds his brain cell by cell, consciousness shouldn't snap back like turning on a light. There's no mechanism in neuroscience capable of instant mnemonic reconstruction. That means his awareness must persist somewhere beyond tissue damage, perhaps quantum information level nonsense the comics never address. It's one of his most unrealistic abilities and the most terrifying to imagine. If Deadpool's biology seems unstoppable, the reality behind it would be unbearable. Imagine every cell in your body permanently locked in overdrive. That's what endless regeneration means. Division without rest, repair without limit, and pain without reprieve. In the real world, even small imbalances in regeneration cause devastation. Conditions like Proteus syndrome force tissues to grow uncontrollably, stretching bones and skin into grotesque shapes. People suffering from nerve hyperplasia experience constant pain because their nerves keep branching and healing when nothing's broken. Deadpool's entire body is a magnified version of those disorders, multiplied by a thousand and tied to consciousness that never switches off. Every wound triggers a microscopic war, but if that cascade never stops, it consumes everything. Nutrients, oxygen, even the body's sense of equilibrium. Deadpool's system would burn through his resources in minutes, forcing perpetual hunger and fever-like heat as cells tear apart and reform. His temperature should hover well above survivable levels, yet somehow he stays mobile, trapped in a metabolic storm that would cook anyone else alive. Then there's the constant inflammation. Healing relies on immune response, but if your immune system never quiets down, you live in a state of permanent irritation. Swelling, soreness, and oxidative stress become the baseline. His scars aren't remnants of damage. They're symptoms of runaway repair. Each layer of tissue pulls against the last, warping collagen into the scarred texture we recognize as his face. It's the surface record of regeneration gone wrong. Regeneration implies that brain cells, too, are replaced. But neurons store identity through their connections. Every link between them encodes experience. Continuous turnover would gradually erode those patterns. In a realistic model, Deadpool would lose fragments of himself every time his brain rebuilt. Minor memories would blur first, then language, habits, personality. What's left might be the illusion of continuity, a mind rebooting over and over, always believing it's the same person. Even in his own universe, he's occasionally aware of that instability. Jokes about deja vu and mixed timelines echo deeper than truth. His brain probably misfiles memories because rewiring never stops. Imagine waking up from every healing episode with slight differences in who you are, but never being able to notice because the new you inherits the confusion. Immortality becomes a cycle of tiny deaths disguised as continuity. Over time, such instability would break even the strongest mind. Regrowing organs while awake, feeling bones fuse and tendons knit, there's no peace in that. Painkillers wouldn't work. His metabolism would burn through drugs before they reached the bloodstream. Sleep wouldn't matter either. He'd heal faster than his body could rest. Biological systems need downtime to rebuild order. Deadpool's body denies him that luxury. So when the comics describe him as cursed with life, it's not just poetic. Thanos literally cursed him with immortality once, jealous of his relationship with death personified. But beyond the myth, that curse mirrors the scientific horror perfectly. An immune system turned eternal, a metabolism that refuses equilibrium, a mind trapped in an endless feedback loop. The tragedy is that nothing inside him knows when to stop. For all his wisecracks, Deadpool's healing isn't a gift. It's a biological apocalypse confined to one body. Perfect regeneration means never finishing the act of living. Every burn, cut, and bullet is just another turn in a loop that never ends. He can't die, but he also never really lives. Deadpool's so-called healing factor isn't superhuman. It's biologically impossible. Constant regeneration would destroy tissue integrity, dissolve identity, and trap consciousness inside endless repair. Real science says a body like his could never stabilize. It would consume itself faster than it heals. It's a fascinating contradiction. Immortality as a terminal disease, comedy built for agony. And that paradox is what makes him unforgettable. 
a superhero powered by science that should only exist in nightmares. If you want to see how Wolverine's slower, more disciplined healing might almost work in real biology, watch our next breakdown. Subscribe to Nerd Science for more deep dives linking real physics and impossible powers.